it's such an anomaly because a zero and a one are here. See, what I, what I saw in the other worlds is that they were either zeros or ones. They didn't actually contain both, except for this one. And this is why this one became prime. This is known as the 10. It, it's, a, it's a prime because it has ones and zeros here. And then somebody would say, well, you can't make a one a zero, but you can just as soon as nothing comes from something. <laughs> So this is where we always got to put that Bushido blade out and chop this false illusion that says that, well, you can't, well, can is actually the name for the serpent. So there's the serpent, there's the cross. So it, that whole symbolism, which is the whole, really the Messiah symbolism is saying, give it to, well, the external Messiah, I'll make that very clear. Well, someone else can, but not me, because we can't. So even the language, it unrolls itself and you see this. Like, see, the reason why people can't see what they're saying is because they're moving at a, a low FPS, which is a frame per second. When you're moving at 7.83 hertz, you have a low frame per second. So this means that you can't actually see the particles, just like there's water moving through the air, there's scents moving through the air, there's all different things moving through the air, but you can't see them because the eyes have a low FPS. When you raise the frequency, it raises the frames per second. And then all of a sudden you're aware of other things, what I call the causes to the effects. Now you can actually see the causes. And then as you raise FPS even higher and you get above the causes, you can manipulate the causes. And then when you can manipulate the causes, you can change the effects. This is a time Lord. And I, I've been there but I'm so close to being able to do it on cue. And then there's another thing, and I, I wanna take people into, inside of this. This is what I saw. See, I saw in the mind, because this is some, something strange with this dimension. It has refractions of mirrors and smoke, and it's the looking glass. Like something's literally put an illusion or has created some kind of illusion out of this dimension. And it has a lot to do with lenses and glass and crystals and these kind of things, which, you know, again, is a big, big subjects and topics that I won't get into deeper uh, than that. But what I saw is, is that when I came into this certain stage, I just call it the jump room. And in the jump room of your consciousness, you actually can see yourself in all of the realities through these rectangles which I guess is why we started using TVs, like widescreen TVs, or why the TV even became an invention, because when someone else is shining one of these lenses on you, on the other side of this, and I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible, but on the other side of this, you can see yourself through those lenses all of a sudden, because I guess time collapses, so every refraction you can see. And then when you try to go into one of them, you start feeling all of the emotion that's associated with that particular scene. And this allows you to start to phase into that frequency. And then, man, when I saw that, I was like, Eureka, like this is actually what's happening. Like I can see, and I just saw two then because I lost the vision and just the excitement of it. And that's what I was saying. The higher the frequency, the less empathy, meaning incitement is a part of empathy. So what happens, it's a part of emotion. So even excitement throws off the balance. And so what I'm actually explaining to people about, if you really want to do something here to have true compassion is not to judge, is basically not to allow your frequency to be thrown into one direction or another so that you stay in the center. And then when you stay in the center, then there's no circumference. So there's nothing that can circumscribe you. There's nothing that can basically surround you. So then you can't be eaten. <laughs> and then this puts you into a whole nother stage. And the reason why most people on the planet can't explain to you about that stage is because they haven't reached it yet. And then there's continuous knowledge being and, 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 and discouragement being pushed forth, saying that we're not primes, which is, oh, there's a God. Oh, there's a higher self. Oh, there's this alien. Oh, there's these angels. And every time it's just stacking more world or words on top of the individual. And these look like clouds in the physical reality, okay? So one time when I was in that stage of the activation, I started noticing that I could change certain things. See, I couldn't change humans and I couldn't change animals. So I asked, why couldn't I change them? And it said, because they're operating just like you on their own volition. 
but look, and, but look, and I could change the clouds and I could change the trees. And I said, well, why can I change those? And he said, because those are still in mirror reflection of you. They are you. So then I looked and then just recently I had the same thing happen again. And I was looking at the sky and the clouds were moving fast. And I said, man, I wonder if I can slow the clouds down. And then I started to tap into that side of the, the brain that the consciousness that does that. And then sure enough, the clouds, they started slowing down a little bit, not a lot. But then I remembered how when I was in the other stage, I could not only slow the clouds down, I can turn them around and put them in the wrong in the, in the I can pull them in the opposite direction. And it said, yeah, because that's when you access the wind. See, when you can be the wind, which is one of the elements then you can wind, you can rewind and wind. So the wind side of us allows us to control time somehow. And I'm on the brink and I've seen this, but see, people always want to know, well, how, how would that affect the reality? How that would affect everyone else? And that's our first error. When you go plugging in all these other external integers into your equations, you're not going to come out with anything that's exact or accurate. So this is why, for instance, there's this mountain, okay? And this mountain is so dense, it doesn't refract light, so you can't see it. And the beings that live on this mountain, they are not limited like we are because everyone on that mountain has a stronger projection about what they can do. Because what they've done is they've roped off a segment in time, they've collapsed this normal frequency that we always deal with here in this reality on that mountain. So this would be the same thing as if we got into a room, let's say five strong minds, strong bodies, strong souls, and then we started to send those projections in. We take ourselves outside of time somehow. And once we do that, then there's no observer. And then once we remove the observer, there's no one's thoughts to cancel it. See, it's the same thing that they, they discovered in the double slot experiment that the, 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 um, the doubt of the scientists affected the experiment. So this happens on the spiritual plane, too, is what I'm telling you, is that you can change everything around you unless there's someone that doubts. And because there's so many watchers that are always doubting, constantly sending out a frequency that doubts you and looks at you as less. And this, see, this is what I've been even seeing in the reality. Like people will even take other workers, like human slavery is not over yet. Like they ship some of these people from other countries to these other places and they put them in these small rooms and make them work and they feed them this food and, you know, feed them the cheapest food. And so nothing's really changed. It's all still going on, but see that doubt, of who we really are is tied directly into what we're putting over our heads. So when we remove that, and when we really go into work with removing those kind of burdens off of people by giving them the clarity, see, you're not doing it for them because there's no such thing. If you even start doing that, you, be, you roll into the same areas of the external Christ. But when you give them the power, like you empower them, like, this is what this knowledge is doing. A person can cake themselves from nothing. It can make a cripple climb trees. I've watched myself completely collapse a life and grow another one again within a year and a half, two years. And it's almost become a consistent action of tearing it all down in order to build it back up better again versus coveting what is there. Like, oh, well, you know, some person get into themselves as they are now and they just hone in on that so much and they just keep putting clothes on it and keep putting more makeup on it and, and all these different things, never realizing that it's something greater until they solidify it as that, right? Like if you solidify it, you put, you know, you believe so much in it. And this, this has to do with the question that I was 